Welcome to unit two of this week. This is about variables. Computer program handle data. And like real world objects, this data has to be somehow accessible. It has to be stored somewhere. In the real world, you must handle real world objects. And in programs, you must handle data. And the things where data are stored in are called variables. Important? One variable can just store one value. And if you read the value out of the data, it is still available. This is like reading a book. If you're reading a book, the content in the book is still available. Variables do have names. For example, a variable name could be x or length or name of person, but to be aware of the underscores. There are a few rules for variable names. Variables can handle data in two ways. Either you write data into the variable or you read data out of the variable. Again, the data is still available if you have read it. You can assign variables. That means write data into a variable. You can assign data to a variable using the equal sign. Example could be x equal to 42. And here, in this case, the value, the data 42 on the right side of the equal sign is read into the variable x. It's, it's, the value is assigned to this variable. And vice versa, you can read by simply calling uh, the variable name. Given the example x equal to 2 times y, here the current value of the variable y is read. It is multiplied by 2 and the result is assigned to the variable x. There are more things about variables and these I will show in the notebook. So it's show time. Let's dig into the notebook. You should open the notebook right now and follow up what we are doing, what I'm doing right there. So here we are. Let's dig di directly into this uh, coding cell. I will execute it and what you can see is I have one variable a, I'll, I'll assign the value 2 to it, I'll assign the value 3 to the variable b using the equal sign and in the last statement I multiply the two values and the result is given as the output. Yeah, once again we have a 6. Of course you can reassign a new value to a variable. In here, in this cell, you can see I have first assigned the value 2 to the variable a, then I'll assign the 3 to the variable a, and in the end it's just the 3 in there. So once you assign a value to a variable, and there has been another value in this variable before, this first var value is forgotten. So if you would like to remember what's in there, you have to use another variable. Of course, there is more than one variable. In here, you have a, b and c. Each of these variables get assigned in value 1, 2, 3. And in the end, I just show out, I give the value of the variable b, which is 2. Let's dig into a little bit more deeper. In the following, you can see um, something which looks a little bit strange. First, in the first statement, the value 25 is assigned to the variable a. And then there is something which looks weird, at least if you look at it from a mathematical point of view. a equal to a plus 10. However, this is not, a, this is not an assertion. This is an assignment. So what's happening is, yeah, you take the current value of a, which is 25 at this point in time, 
you add the 10, which is 35, and you assign the result, you assign the sum again to the variable a. Yeah, so you can see the final value is 35. So don't get confused if the variable, one variable is on both sides of the equal sign. That's quite standard in computer programs. Let's have a look at the next cell. A equal to unknown variable. If you run this cell, you get an error. Actually, this, it states name unknown variable is not defined. So what has happened here is you have in this case accessed a variable in read mode. So the variable unknown variable is, is accessed in read mode. And actually it has not been defined before. So at least within this um, session, never ever a variable has assigned, a value has assigned to this variable. So if you would like to access it now in read mode, it's not possible. And that's why we have this um, name error. And here something is quite interesting, which you should remember. All these cells are connected. All these cells in one notebook are connected. So again, I run a, um, uh, so again, I run a cell. So you see, I get basically the same error as before. New variable is not defined. Uh, and here's the error. However, if in the next cell I define new variable, yeah, I assign the value 20 to it, and I do now rerun this cell again, suddenly it works. Why that? Now, new variable has, become, has got a value in this coding cell, and uh, now I can use it even in the cell before, because from an execution order you can see I'll have here execution number eight, and here is execution number nine, so you can follow up um, which, well, which cell has been executed when. Yeah, so it's very important to understand in these notebooks that these cells are interconnected and variables which have been assigned in one cell can be reused in the other cells later on. What you can see quite often is a pattern like this. Yeah, so maybe you would like to have a more complex operation like that one, a equal to five times three times seven and so on and so on. You could of course write it in one statement. However, you could split it up, which sometimes make it more readable for the user. In this case, you first assign the value five to it. And in the next step, you multiply the current value with three yeah, by saying a equals to a times three. You do the same thing with the value seven. And finally, you add these uh, values in the bracket. Of course, if you split it up like this, you have to take care to follow the, these typical mathematical rules, which means plus comes after um, multiplication, addition comes after multiplication, and the parentheses have to be taken into account. One more thing, which is uh, interesting, is, is <clears throat> one more thing which is important to notice. On the left side of an assignment, there must be only one variable. So if you would like, for example, to express a square equals to b square plus c square, you cannot simply write it like that. Yeah, so if you run it, yeah, then it simply says you have a syntax error, you can't assign a value, can't assign a value to an app operator. Yeah, so here you have this power by operator, and you can't simply hand in a value to these things. So if you would like to go for it, you have maybe to do it in a two steps. Yeah, so you first can yes, set 
a equals to b by the power of 2 plus c by the power of 2. And in a second step, you take the square root, which is the same as the power of 0.5. Yeah, and you can see I'll end up with a 5 as a result. So far, we have used only very simple variable names, a, b, c, and so on. Uh, however, names, sorry, variable names can become more complex and they should actually become complex. However, um, you should always, you always have to follow the rules of these variable names. So, the variable, variable names can consist of uh, letters, digits, and underscores, but they have to start with a letter or an underscore. And the following yeah, these names, these variable names are all correct. Name, surname, account balance, or underscore new underscore balance, these are all correct. However, do you see the arrows in here? So both are wrong. However, only the first one is identified right now because um, we have one at the very beginning. But if I make it a comment and rerun it, you will see that the second one is not valid as well. Yeah, here you see this add symbol is recognized as an operator, so it's not valid to use it within a variable name. Important as well, in Python variable names are case sensitive. So name with a small n at the beginning and name with a capital N at the beginning are two different variables. And you can see the result in here. So if you um, add them plus uh, a space in the middle, then you get this Joey Ramon from the Ramones as a complete result. There are some more rules. So some Variables are already variable names are already in use. So, for example, the keywords and or while or if are part of the Python language, and so they must not be used as a variable name. Let's give it a try. We say if equals to 42, and here it says invalid syntax. Actually, if the if pops up, then a special syntax is required, is expected from the interpreter. And as you do not follow this syntax, it uh, simply states it's not correct. Besides these rules, there are a few conventions for variable names. So in Python, lowercase variables are preferred. It's not a hard rule, it's a convention. So you should better name call it name with a small n rather than name with a capital N. And you should, if you, con com if you combine several words into uh, a variable name, you should use underscores to combine them. Uh, but that's again, it's a convention. What is not a convention though is you should use usable, readable, rememberable um, names. For example, if you always, for convenience, only take variable names like A, B, and C, but there is something behind it, for example, new account balance or a car length, then you should better take those names instead. Most of the time, you will spend with finding faults rather than really programming. And if in a year's time you're trying to fix faults in a program which simply uses variables A, B, C, then you don't know what these are all about. So better spend time and use good varia variable names which you can remember in a year's time. Simply have this code. I can't remember what this was all about. But what you can see is that there is some assignments and then you see this variable b is assigned to a and here is a is assigned to b. I can't remember what's happening. 
If there would be good variable names, it might be more easy for me to get an insight what this is all about. Variables do not have to be declared as in other programs. So you can start directly and jump into it and use a variable like here a equals to 10. In other programs this declaration is necessary. A declaration is something like you say hey a is a variable um, for strings or integers which we'll discuss later. There is one statement which pops up quite often. This a equals to a plus one. We talked already about that uh, this variable a could show up on both sides of the equal sign. However, as is increasing a variable by one, which is called an increment, as this um, statement is popping up so often, there is an even shorter way to write it down, which is a plus equal one. Yeah, actually, a equals to a plus one is the same as a plus equal, equal one. It's just a little bit shorter to write it down. So if you run it, yeah, you can see the result. We have assigned the value 1 to a, we have increased, we have incremented the value um, a by 1 and then we have printed it out and of course 1 plus 1 is 2. The same actually works for multiplication and minus. So if you run this cell, you could start calculating in your head, you see first a is 10, then I multiply it with 2, it's 20, then I subtract 100 and the result is then of course minus 80. Finally, let's do an exercise. So I will do the first half and let you um, do the more complex second part. Calculate the volume and surface area of a cube. So side lengths ABC are equal or a cuboid and here the side lengths are different in length. So what I can do in here is I simply say length. Let's say I make it 5. And then of course you have to know the formulas. So what is the volume of a, um, of a cube? It's length times width times height. And as here all these are the same. I can simply say volume equals to length times length times length. And what is the surface? Yeah, you have six surfaces. So each of these um, combinations has have to be multiplied too. So usually you have um, two times length times width plus two times length times height plus two times length width times height. In our case we can simplify again and we say we have six times the surface of length times length. So what we have is six times length times length. And in the end, we would like to print out the result. Print volume and print surface. So let's see. Our, our cube would have the volume of 125 and would, it would have a surface of 150. Of course, you can now double check for example you make a 10 in here and you come up with the result of a volume of a thousand and a surface of 600. So what you have to do now if you would like to calculate a cuboid you have of course uh, to put in here width equal to whatever height 
equal to whatever as well. Yeah, you have to replace length times length times length by length times width time height. And here you have to um, then have two times length times width plus two times length. There's multiplication missing. times um, height plus and one combination is missing, please insert it by yourself. So, what have you learned? First, nearly all programs make use of variables. You simply need these variables to handle data within your programs. Data can be either written into variables or they can be read from variables. Writing a value into a variable is called an assignment. The assignments in these programs and assertions in mathematics look quite similar. However, they are completely different. And if you have this mathemat mathematical point of view and look on uh, assertions, these can look a little bit weird if you, for example, remember things like a plus equal one. So take care, but get used to it.